Welcome to The Supernatural with Laura Maxwell on Eternal Radio. In these programs, we will hear the true supernatural accounts from those who try various spiritualities. You shall tell the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I'm excited to be back for a brand new series of The Supernatural with Laura Maxwell. I'm so excited that I'm stuttering already. (laughs) Um, Yeah, it's a brand new series, guys, and I'm very, very excited about the guest we have on tonight. And, you know, just want to thank God because the show has now been running for three years and three months. Can you believe it? And I'm very grateful to my boss, Stephen Merrick, and all the team at Eternal Radio for airing my shows. And I'm also so grateful to the Lord that, you know, he has used these shows to bring people to salvation, healing, and deliverance. And we do so appreciate you sending us your praise reports and do keep them coming so we can praise God together in thanksgiving to him. And as some of you will know, Eternal Radio does have a Facebook page, but it also has a brand new and interactive website. And that is eternalradio.live. It's really, you know, just got such a lot of um, good features. You guys can even join it. You can set up your own page, um, send me and the other host friend requests you can comment on discussion groups and so on and you can see my page and the pages of all the other volunteer hosts you can find out more details about all our shows and you can check the dates and the timings of our shows and our repeats on the schedule page it also lists all the various ways you can listen to the shows and the different platforms Um, Eternal Radio is accessible on and I know that not all of you can actually access YouTube to catch the uploads there so this might be useful for you and just about every single one of the shows the past three years is on my YouTube channel Um, if you haven't heard them all or you want to perhaps listen to one or two again and my YouTube channel is Laura Maxwell, ex-spiritist, and you can find the playlist there, um, the Eternal Radio show playlist. And, you know, Eternal Radio has had a large audience worldwide for the past five or seven years, but amazingly, since this brand new platform um, has been created, this new website, the listener numbers have actually doubled, which is just incredible and we give God all the glory for that so thank you guys um, for, for, for coming back for this new series and you know I was surprised that many of you still listen to the repeats from previous years even though the series was on a break um, it, it was good of you to let me know you were enjoying the repeats and well basically where are we now we're now into March 2018 and our Scottish snow has just finally melted. Wow! We really have had a bit of a snowstorm uh, lately as some of you might have have noticed from the news. So tonight, even though I'm sitting here still rather cold, we're connecting with a lady all the way from sunny Cocoa, Florida. I'm very excited about this guest and I'm sure you all really appreciate her testimony as I most certainly do. She is a former paranormal investigator and she led her own very successful paranormal investigation ghost hunting team in Florida. And her name is keeping you all in suspense here (laughs) Dana Emmanuel. So hello Dana, how are you? Doing fine, Laura. How are you? I'm doing fine, and I'm excited to have you on today. Oh, I'm so excited as well. This is a special interview for me. 
Um, as many people might not know, um, it was actually before I left the occult that I had heard your testimony and your testimony helped me. So I know there's power in the testimony. So, Oh, that's, that really thrills my heart, Dana. Really, I can't tell you how that thrills me. Um, uh, so what year would that be? That was in 2011. It was in uh, probably uh, while well, I left and got my deliverance done February of 2011. So it was right around that time uh, when I actually heard it. Wow, that's yeah. that's astonishing. I'm so grateful to God. Um, Me too. Yeah, you, you you just you just don't realize the amount of people that um, our testimonies do reach, and um, it's awesome because you know I'm sitting here in Scotland and you're over there in Florida. Who would have thought? That's just God knew. <laughs> I know, and here I am telling my testimony. This is so special to me. Um, That's it lovely. really is something. <laughs> I just I, I would have never thought. I would have never thought. <laughs> but uh -huh. I'm very grateful, and I'm grateful to God for it, too. I'm so grateful, too. And actually, funnily enough, you're not, one of, you're not the first guest to tell me that. Um, I've had guests in the past who... I didn't even know um, that my testimony was a part of them coming to faith or of their deliverance until they were on my show and they actually said it during the show and I was pretty surprised to hear it myself. So it, it, it's such a blessing to me, it really, really is to, to hear to hear that. And your surname is Emmanuel. What a name! Yes, very special name. Oh, <laughs> yes, lovely. Yes, it is. It is it's lovely. Uh, before before we get into your testimony, Dana, obviously at the at the end, um, you will share your details. Uh, but let's just share them at the outset uh, too. So so do tell us um, the names of your YouTube channel and your blog. Uh, talking about your blog, I think it was maybe me that encouraged you to create it. Yes. A while back. Yes, it was. Was yes, it? it? I wasn't. Was. I wasn't sure if that was a false memory or not. But <laughs> no, nope, nope, you sure did. You were the one. I I've never actually even shown a real interest in writing, except I did want really? to write a book with my testimony, and that was suggested by um, Patrick Meekin in our uh -huh. interview back in I think 2014. But I know Patrick I, Eakin, yeah. yeah, and after I talked to you, you just kind of rekindled that. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I was like, okay. And then I started writing stuff, and I thought, well, I'll share it on my blog, you know, because I really love your blog and, and the way you have it set up and the way you, uh, you know, share all the information, you know, and, and it's a good tool to use. So I, I figured I would do the same thing, and, and um, so I've been doing it, and actually uh, been getting a lot of good uh, results from it, you know, people telling me that it 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 helped you know in some way or another so um uh -huh. i definitely give god the glory for that and um and i just hope that he'll keep uh, giving me ideas you know of things to write and and put in there so amen and i thank well, you <laughs> well I, I love your blog i thank you that, that you did it i'm really surprised to hear that that you know you hadn't written much before because i think your writing is, is very good it's beautiful and and the insights you share in fact i love it so much I'm, I'm usually stealing all your posts and videos and putting it on my own blog please do please do yes yeah. i love yours yeah. though i you know so that's no problem with that the more it goes out there the better <laughs> absolutely amen yeah. so yeah please just you know tell us your um your youtube channel and your blog and then we'll get into your testimony Okay, um, my YouTube channel is, uh, it's Exposing the Enemy, and that starts with an E, um, and it spells it out just the way it sounds, and then my my blog is ExposingTheEnemy.com, and it starts with an X, I just don't have the E at the beginning of it, and that's where you can see the, um, the blogs that I posted, and I usually insert the videos in on the blogs, so that way you can find my videos that way as well. Yep, and um, we we just did a couple of interviews together actually with Mark Cunningham and, and they they're probably I know they're on my blog but they're probably on your blog now or, or about soon um, as well and of course you're on Facebook too um, Dana Thompson Emmanuel on Facebook 
Yes, that was my maiden name. That way, in case of, you know, anybody that knew me, you know, before I was married would uh, search for me, I put that in there. And it, sure. But it is under exposing the enemy there as well. Yep. You know. And the, the graphics are really, I really like the graphics that you use as well. They're, they're very appropriate. Um, yep, so I appreciate that too. Yeah. So, Dana, um, really just uh, jump in and, and tell us, um, perhaps about your childhood, you know, um, did your parents have any spiritual beliefs? Was there supernatural things happening to them? Uh, well, my, um, I, I was raised by my mother and stepfather, <clears throat> and uh, my parents were divorced when I was two, and but I was still, my, my father still had a lot, a big part of my life. I would go over there on weekends and stay the weekends with him, but... <laughs> Um, my mom was pretty quiet about her. I knew she believed in God, but she was very quiet about it and everything. Um, but my father was very, you know, I, people would say religious, but you know, he was really strong in his faith. And, um, so whenever I'd go over to his house, although he was strong in his faith, he had this weakness and that is he loved scary movies <laughs> and I did too. You know, mm -hmm. so that was, I think that's kind of like what started, you know, the fascination with the paranormal. And I was always more attracted to the movies that included stuff about uh, haunted houses or mm -hmm. even exorcisms, things like that. Um, but that's, I, I believe that's what started it. And then um, after that, I had to cut, my aunt was very fascinated with it too. And I would go to her house and, she had five kids, they were my cousins, and we were all close, but every time I'd go over there, I would go straight to her room, <laughs> and we would sit in there and talk for hours, so it was always about stuff, you know, she was also strong, very strong in her faith, but mm -hmm. she did experience a lot of things, supernatural, um, as you could say, and she, uh, she would tell me things that she heard, you know, the voice of God, and God would tell her things. Uh, she had times where she actually had hauntings in her home and uh, there was actually one incident that she had told me about where she had a, a minister come in and they actually prayed and he cleansed the home and the spirit went out the bathroom window and when it did it knocked over some things that whatnots that was in the window sill. Oh. so uh -huh. it, uh, you know that right there she that was the first time i ever heard of any kind of um, exorcisms or deliverances or anything like that and um, but it was uh, actually through her but we talked a lot about stuff like that and we were both very interested in it mm -hmm. um, she she actually passed away this last year and I we were so close <laughs> oh, but sorry. I know she went to see the Lord I was there when she passed away and she seen oh. the light and she talked about this light oh. and we were trying to close the window you know it, the windows were already shut but we were trying to see if there was any cracks or anything and we couldn't get the light to stop and she kept saying there was a light oh. and uh -huh. her eyes were shut and we were like I said frantically trying to shut you know see where this light was coming from and didn't even realize oh. it was the light of Jesus she was seeing oh. you can't oh. stop that oh. you know but yeah. it was just something and, and and after that happened and everything, it just it reassured me too, you know, because I knew she was such a strong believer. Oh gosh, every time I talked to her or my dad about anything, they would always say, "Just pray about it," you know. So oh. I learned, you know, to have faith. Always pray about it. If no matter what was going on in my life, at tough times or any time, pray about it, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, she was she was very strong in in the faith, and she was my aunt Wanda. <laughs> But oh. um, yeah, <laughs> but um, I loved her. I loved her so much. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so uh, that that that's how it got started when I was a kid. And then we, I had some friends, and when we would have sleepovers, we would always play the games, you know, like go in the bathroom in the in the mirror and play Mary Mary, and we would do things like that, or or we would try to do that light as a feather, stiff as a board, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. things like that and we never had anything happen besides just scaring each other you know but yeah. but it was interesting and we always did that stuff um but you know it was really weird um when i was really small my mom told me after i left the occult um she had told me that there was an incident when i was young when i was very young that i came to her and i had asked her 
which it's very confusing why it happened. I don't know why it happened, but she told me that I came to her and I asked her, I said, mom, I said, do you ever like when you're walking down a road, do you ever like float above yourself? Like where you could see yourself walking down the road, you know, mm -hmm. and I, to this day, don't know what I was experiencing back then when this was going on or why it happened. But when she did tell me, I truly, uh, you know, could almost think of that, but I don't remember what happened or anything. So I think there was a little bit more deep involvement that I, or something that I tried back. I, I don't know, but, um, yeah. you know, it was, it was something going on, <laughs> but I yeah. just don't remember it. I don't recall, you know, uh, mm -hmm. any of that, you know, really, but, um, and did you, did you ever s certainly sounds like uh, attempts at astral, projection yeah it really does and but yeah. what's so weird is the way i explained it to her uh you know i was asking her if she did that like i thought it was something normal or something and, mm -hmm. and like i said when she told me that i almost envisioned it really but mm -hmm. i just don't recall how you know how it happened or what happened at the time or anything i was actually shocked by it when she said it because it mm -hmm. it almost brought back you know some kind of memory there and i'm like oh wow i wonder what that was about you know um, yeah, and then um, uh, did you ever? Um, it's actually reminded me of something. I remember being a child. You know, I was the same, interested in the scary movies and the ghost stories and all that. Yeah. And myself and friends trying things, but we also tried to hypnotize each other. It didn't work. But did you guys try that? No, I don't recall ever doing that. Um, hmm. I, I recall like doing like blood sister things like where you cut your finger, you know, and try to, you know, rub fingers with a friend and, you know, yeah, just I did things that too, like yeah. that, but the, nothing, nothing like the hip, t hip, hip, t um, sorry, my <laughs> hypnosis or anything like that. I don't mm -hmm. recall. I really don't. You know. Um, yeah, well, please go on. Um, uh, but, uh, so anyway, we, you know, stuff like that, I was always fascinated. And then after um i got married and i started having my kids uh we i they also love the scary movies i probably because of me you know but um we <laughs> always loved them and then uh, we'd have people come over like they when they would have friends come over and stay the night we would sit up and scare each other and we'd watch scary movies that, that was always what i looked forward to you know we'd mm -hmm. go rent the scary movies you know or we'd you know there was nothing we loved more than that you know that was our thing that we would do together um you know is watch scary movies and stuff like that um but and and it was it was a fascination but i never really got into researching what these things were until after i had uh experienced a paranormal incident myself and hmm. that made me question okay what are these things you know i i truly didn't even know if this supernatural was real you know back then uh, when yeah. I was watching the scary movies and all, I just thought it was some fascination sci-fi. You know, you just don't know until something yeah. happens yeah. to you. And then you're like, oh, wow, what is that? Then you start wondering, what is it? And you mm -hmm, start wondering mm -hmm. about the afterlife, you know, like, well, gosh, well, is it ghost? If it is, then what happens to us when we die? Because, you know, I still mm -hmm. went to church, you know, when I was a kid. I, I always went to church, you know, on the weekends with my dad, you know. But, mm -hmm. but I, I... I just never really, I just knew that when you die, you go to heaven or you go to hell. You know, if you're not mm -hmm. a believer, you go to hell. But mm -hmm. so it was, it did bring on um, questions, you know, like, okay, well, if these ghosts are really here, you know, does that mean we don't go to heaven? You see, I just didn't realize that that was the enemy's way of trying to make you doubt what the Bible says, actually. But, uh -huh. you know, at the time, but um, what had happened is I moved in with my grandmother. She had Alzheimer's and I was a nurse assistant and I had my, I was certified and everything. So mm -hmm. when my grandmother had Alzheimer's, um, she, she was bedridden and, you know, um, so they needed someone to move in to take care of her. So I went ahead and I, I uh, volunteered and I moved in with her, me and my husband and my kids. Oh. Well, when we were there, my grandfather had died uh, like it was like 18 years before this though so mm -hmm. um, and then when we moved in I had a couple family members that said uh, you know oh you better watch out grandpa's still in there you know he does watch after grandmother you know and they told mm -hmm. me of some things that they had heard happen and uh, when they were there themselves well 
like I said, at this time, I didn't know this stuff was real or not. I'm like, I just kind of blew it off, but it fascinated me, you know? Mm -hmm. So when um, we did start hearing noises, <laughs> and, you know, and I thought, nah, it's maybe just because I've, I've heard this stuff. So I, you know, I just kind of blew it off. But it got to where, you know, it was getting loud at night and it would wake you up and then the noises would stop. Um, you, it was just all kind of different things would happen. Well, mm -hmm. then um, she had a jewelry box and it had like a rose in it. And all of a sudden that would just start playing. <laughs> that was another thing, you know. And they had told us about that, too. And it did happen. Well, mm -hmm. then after um, we was there just a short while, um, the noises got so loud in the kitchen and it woke me up, but the noises continued and mm -hmm. I didn't open my eyes yet. And I thought, okay, all right. You know, and I thought, I know since I opened my eyes, it's probably going to stop, but I wanted to see what it was, you know, and catch mm -hmm. it. So I was laying there and I thought, okay, because where we slept at was in the old family room, which was directly across from the kitchen. And there was a sliding glass door that separated the two rooms. Well, the sliding glass door, we would open at night because of the air, you know, the air condition. So when we were in there uh, and this happened, I was laying there and all of a sudden I heard it again. And when I did, I looked over. I mean, it took a lot of nerve. <laughs> I looked over there, and when I did, the chair next to the table just scooted across the floor, and I was like, I mean, I jumped out of the Whoa. room. It, as much as I'm fascinated with the paranormal at this time, that scared me. I ran out yeah. the side door of the house, and I was all upset, and, and my husband come out there, and he's like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And I told him what I seen, and I'm like, I'm not going back in that house. I was so scared, you know, mm -hmm. and he was like, oh, it's probably just your grandpa, you know, we already heard that, and it's, it, it, it's probably just him, and whatever it is, it's not trying to hurt us, um, you know, it's just him looking after your grandma, you know, so... After a little bit of time, I thought, okay, maybe it is, you know, it probably is, you know. So mm -hmm. we end up just staying there. And well, then that's when I started questioning because I'm like, wait a minute, is it grandpa? You know, if that's grandpa, then then that means he's not in heaven or, you know. And yeah. so I got to thinking and I that I started looking into it, you know, and that we started like going to the local graveyards and, you know, just just looking to see if we see anything, taking pictures and stuff like that. And uh, just like me and my kids uh, and everything. Well, then we did that for a while and stuff. And uh, actually, the very first night, and I believe this was on purpose, <laughs> the very first night at the very first grave that we went to and we started recording, we got an EVP, which oh. is an electronic voice phenomena on a recorder. And uh -huh. when I asked, what is your name, we actually heard a voice say Frank. Now, I didn't hear this because I didn't review it at the time until after mm -hmm. we went home. But we did get that EVP, and it was very clear. So, uh, And we also got a picture of an apparition that night, which was very compelling. So mm -hmm. that kind of drew us in even more, you know, that mm -hmm. evidence, you know. Mm -hmm. so, and what was that? Had that been your grandfather's name? No, Frank. no, no, uh, no, okay. but since we heard that name, when I asked, what is your name? I was standing at sure. a grave and I remember because it was the very first grave that we stood at when we went into the graveyard and we started doing the investigating. And mm -hmm. so uh, after I went home and I heard that name, I told my daughter, I says, you know what? I wonder if that's actually the name on that grave that we were at because we knew that it was at the first one because it was at the beginning of the recording. And I told her, I said, let's go back and see. So we went back the next day and me and my daughter went out there. Sure enough, <laughs> that name on the gravestone was Frank. It was Frank something. I don't remember the last name, but it was Frank. Mm -hmm. So that really just showed me, okay, this stuff is so real. You know, it must be, you know, the guy Frank. So, mm -hmm. and it seemed and like... Fun, like Funnily enough, looking back on it now, um, because if I had been you, I, I would have totally believed that too. Yeah. Um, but but looking back on it now, in a way, it's kind of strange because uh, it's almost a red flag. Because if that really was Frank's ghost, you know, yeah. why is he hanging about his graveyard all the time? You would think he would true. be visiting family or what? <laughs> yes, true. Exactly. You know, so it, it, it's odd. But, but when we are fascinated by that stuff, we do tend to just accept um, any explanation that, that uh, tends to give it evidence, don't we? Yes, yes, ma'am. And, and it's like 
I believe that it's like the enemy will put that information out there and it's accurate information. You know, mm-hmm. that's how he tricks us because it's like he, he figures the more accurate it is, the more we're going to bite the rest of his lie, you know, and, and believe the rest of it. Mm-hmm. And um, that's like these psychics, you know, the, how they'll, they'll give such good information. And it's so compelling that people believe, okay, well, since it's accurate information, it must be who they say they are. You know, mm-hmm. because only that person knew, mm-hmm. you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and, and, but sure enough, that, that, that's how they, how he gets us. And then, um, and then you also get sometimes, though, you know, the psychics and mediums will admit that sometimes the spirit talking to them is a fraud and it pretends to be a certain ghost. I remember when my mother and I were into spiritualism, we were even told that. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, see, now at this time, I didn't even think at all that, number one, it could be demons, or number mm-hmm. two, that it was uh, lies. You know what I mean? I yeah. just saw, wow, well, this stuff's true. You know, and I figured, well, mm-hmm. hey, and, and honestly, I didn't even realize until way later, I, it didn't even occur to me, because, I mean, things you just don't even realize was right there. You didn't even, under, you know, at the time, you didn't realize it, but... Mm-hmm. I didn't even think about the fact that actually when that chair had moved from my the table at my grandmother's house, it had not even occurred to me that my grandfather actually died there. <laughs> he actually, when they went to eat uh, lunch, uh, he they you know he went up to the table. He had just had a stroke like two weeks before this, and um, my mom was there and she helped him to get to the table. And they had she had made him something to eat. Well, as soon as he went to bite the hamburger, he looked at my grandmother and he said, "Help!" And he turned blue and literally right there died. They they you know he went on the ground and they tried to you know. Uh, bringing back, but he died right there. I didn't even think about all that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it should have been something obvious, Um, but looking back at it now, it's like, oh, no wonder it happened right there. We kept hearing noises in the kitchen, you know, Mm -hmm. was because Mm -hmm. that's where the, uh, you know, he he died. Um, Yeah, and the the demons trying to impersonate him would know that people knew that, so that's why they would show up in the kitchen particularly. Yes, and and it's such an obvious thing. I it, it surprises me. I didn't realize it at the time either. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, we just kept thinking, oh, it must be him because you know my grandmother and everything. But yeah. um, so after after we I, you know, we was doing this stuff and we was getting uh, pictures and stuff. We I mean, the more evidence we got, the more we got hooked. And mm-hmm. you know, honestly, it's just like any other sin. It really is. It, it, the, even these occultic sins like the divination, consulting the familiar spirits and necromancy do eventually lead to bondage. Just mm-hmm. as things like alcohol or gambling, you know, they lead yeah. to bondage. And the, and, mm-hmm. and it's it the fun in it eventually wears out, you know, once these things turn on you, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, so anyway, after, after all this happened and we kept getting these, uh, you know, uh, fooling with the paranormal. Um, later, I I end up getting a computer and stuff, and I got on MySpace, and then I start. I was always, you know, being fascinating the paranormal. I started looking that stuff up, and I started, uh, you know, checking out groups that was also into the paranormal. And I mm-hmm. met another. Uh, I well, no, actually, not. A, I did meet other teams and stuff, but there was a guy that put a post on Craigslist, and he he wanted a investigator for his team. He was recruiting people. Mm-hmm. So me and my daughter were both really interested in it. So I went ahead and I called. Well, he he wanted us to come over and, and, and he wanted me, us to join the team. After We talked for a long time on the phone. And um, he had actually uh, was fascinated with other, you know, like the ghost hunters and all these people, you know, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And he had pictures of them all over his wall with him. So made us think, oh, wow, this guy's important. You know what I mean? And yeah. stuff. And, and we were so intrigued by this, you know. So we were uh-huh. like, oh, yes, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll you know, go with him and, and join his team. And we were fascinated. So we mm-hmm. went ahead and joined his team and, and everything. And we, you know, went to all kind of places and stuff. And, and um, we got more into it, like doing the table tippings and, uh, you know, messing with the Ouija boards and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Now... We had the thing, like with a Ouija board. We had a couple can, of times. Can you stuff. just share? Can you just share about the table tipping? Because I know not everyone yeah. will have 
heard of that. I certainly remember it back in the days when my mother and I were into it, but um, I know that some folks might not have heard of it. Yes. Uh, actually, the first time we ever did it, we it was at Casadega Spiritualist Camp, and um, we went to, we was going to do an investigation of the Slater house there, and for us to be able to have um, permission to do the investigation overnight there, we had to have a person um, escort us and had to be there with us, you know, during the whole time. Well, this person was also, I think he was like a medium or psychic or something, I'm not sure, but... Um, we were talking about how it would be so neat because we had heard that they did them there and we talked about how neat it would be to do that and he was like well you know we can do that I know how to do it you know so he actually showed us how to do it <laughs> you know and we we sat there that night and did it and the table really did like rock and and knock and you know we kept hearing the noises and everything but um and it it's like when we would ask that he would ask questions uh -huh. Um, he would ask like, um, it, gosh, I can't remember. It was like how, asking like, well, would you like to talk to Dana? And then we would, would hear, either we'd hear a knock or not. Well, would you like to talk to Crystal? And you know, it would, and then we'd huh. hear a knock. So we would know, okay, this spirit wants to talk to them. And then huh. they would say, and then they would, we'd be like, okay, well, what, does your name start with an A? And then it would be no knock. And we would do it that way, um, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And so. That was the first night we really got into starting to do that. Well, that was a whole nother fascination, you know. Uh -huh. um, so one time, uh, and it just sticks out in my mind because of how much uh, this stuff has power, uh, we went to do a table tipping over in Orlando. And it was it was uh, me and a couple other friends that was on my team. We went over there, and when we were asking the table questions, this table would literally stand up on two legs. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> and like whenever we, it would say no, it would lift up and just sit in our lap. And then it would just go back down. And it was like, it was so powerful. I mean, it was unbelievable. And it actually, the answers it was giving, it actually had told one of the girls there that her mother uh, was, something was going to happen to her mother and it would be within a year. Well, mm -hmm. her mother passed away like six months after this. Now, her mm -hmm. mother did have a medical issue, you know, but it was just so odd. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it was almost like when you hear something like that as a Christian, you mm -hmm. would think as soon as somebody would tell you something like that, you'd rebuke it and you'd pray about it. Well, we didn't know to do that. You know, yeah. we just thought, oh, no, something's going to happen. You yeah. kind of accept it. It's like accepting the devil's prophecies over your life. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but it, it, that yeah. one that one scared me. That was the last one I did <laughs> because mm -hmm. I thought, oh, gosh, you know, especially after that happened and she did pass away, it scared me. Mm -hmm. So that we stopped doing that. <laughs> um, but um, after that, we ended up getting our own team and... Um, uh, should I go into like when we did that other investigation right now or do you want to? Yeah, but before you get to that, can I ask yeah. you, um, when you took photographs, was it just an ordinary camera or did you use, um, like back in my day, I remember um, folks would use infrared film. Yes, yes. Um, did you use that? Yes. At first we didn't because I started, you know, with our just regular cameras. And as time went on and we would hear the better cameras to get, we mm -hmm. I started investing in this equipment. So I would start getting, you know, the better cameras. And mm -hmm. we even ended up getting the infrared stationary cameras. And we would have like five of those and we would put them through wow. the house and we would have a monitor <gasps> set like outside of the homes. And you could see, like, in each room what was going on, mm -hmm. you know, on the monitor. And we That's quite an expense. It. I mean, that must have it, cost it a lot of money, getting it, all well, that stuff. Well, the one that I got, was it was like $300, and we ended up, it was like like tax time or something. <laughs> and we ended up getting it, you know, for my birthday in February. It was, a, it was a February. I remember it was on my birthday I got that set. And it was, it, to me, it was so huge to get that set <laughs> because you yeah. see all the ghost hunters had that and and it, it is it's like something that you 
you start taking pride in and you start going to all the, we, we also was, was part of the meetup groups and we would go and we would see, meet other groups that were also into the paranormal. They had their own teams and stuff and we would go and we would share our evidence with each other and we would talk about equipment and talk about things that happened on our cases and, you know, just, you know, um, a bunch of people like-minded, you know, Mm -hmm. in the paranormal and um so we would learn from them too like of different things that we could use or what kind of equipment the new equipment out you know and like yeah. the mel meters and the k2 meters and all that stuff you know um but so we we started meeting people like that and sometimes we'd go on joint investigations with them and and stuff like that too you know mm-hmm. but um so we started our own team and uh, we ended up having to leave the other team. Um, it wasn't that we had to, but I had a little bit of a few differences with the guy that that was the founder of that other team. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, so I I was trying to work away from them. <laughs> um, but yeah. <clears throat> But anyway, so we ended up getting our own team up and everything, and we started going out and. Um, um, these meetups and stuff one time I shared some evidence that we had got on another investigation and they had asked us to show it they were having a conference coming up a paranormal um, conference and they asked us to show it you know and to be guest speakers at their conference so we went ahead and did that and this evidence in particular was actually uh, I caught it on my camcorder this one the the other cameras actually didn't even catch it and the reason why is because when we set up uh, the the cameras through the house at the beginning of the investigation, um, we had realized there was a blind spot being caused by two. We had one camera inside that room, and then there was another room across the hall that we had a camera in there, too. So we was trying, the way we had them set up, one of them, uh, they were facing each other. So it was causing a blind spot. So they asked me to go in one of the rooms and move one of the cameras. So I went mm-hmm. in there and just so happened, I moved the one in that one room <laughs> and I moved it just enough, not even realizing later that since I did that, it, it, uh, we missed the evidence on that camera. <laughs> but, mm-hmm. um, during that investigation, we had a guy, um, the reason we went to the house was because there was a guy that, um, called and he called another group that we knew that uh, because he had been thrown in in the house and he'd hurt his back. Well, mm-hmm. he went to the hospital and the hospital, the doctor there, when he told him what happened, the doctor admitted him to Circles of Care, which is also, it's a mental health facility. Yeah. And he wanted him to go there for evaluation oh. and observation. Uh-huh. It's so sad because you know how it is. They don't believe you. hear that all the time. I know it's so sad. Yeah. So um, while he was at that place, though, one of the nurses was into the paranormal and she believed him. So she gave him, I mean, I'm sorry. She, yeah, she gave him a card from another team that we knew and, and he called them. So he called them and she had too many things going on and she didn't have time to take the case. So she Mm -hmm. called us. So after, when she called us, we're like, okay, yeah, we'll take that case, you know, because actually, I know this sounds crazy, but it was like, we always wanted the more severe cases, you know, mm-hmm. it seemed like that that was where the action was. I mean, it, as stupid as it sounds, it's just the way it is, you know. Yeah, that's a kind of that addic- addictive quality to it again, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. And um so that night, a couple of the investigators went over there and just did a, you know, because the uh, the other people were still there, the family and all. He wasn't there that time because he was still in the hospital. But they went on over there and, um, you know, took out some video, rec- or not video, uh, audio recorders and stuff and just interviewed, you know, the family members and stuff of things that they've seen and, you know, what happened and, uh, you know, to schedule a invest a full investigation. Well, while they were there, they got some EVPs that were nasty EVPs. Um, there were voices on there saying, "Get out, get out now, all of you!" And it was just a lot of different things they were saying. Mm-hmm. So we thought, okay, uh, we already knew that the guy had been thrown and stuff, and we, you know, the the uh, recorder, the recordings were nasty EVPs. And then while they were there, there was also a girl that lived there. She was probably like 17 years old. And she wanted to talk to the spirit of this little girl, 
and mm-hmm. they, they thought it was the spirit of a little girl that yeah. was actually throwing this guy into a wall. It's like, why, you know? Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> things don't add up, does it? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> but so after uh, they were, she was taught, trying to communicate with this spirit, all of a sudden she would like manifest as if she was the spirit. And then oh. she went into the closet in that bedroom. It was actually the same bedroom. Went into the mm-hmm. closet in that bedroom and started sobbing. And, and she was talking like her, she, she was being abused by her father and, you know, stuff like that. So we thought, okay, well, maybe it's, maybe it's actually the father had died and maybe he's the one that's doing all this stuff. You know, we just mm-hmm. didn't know what, what to make out of it. So sure. we went the next week. And um, we to do the full investigation, and the guy was out of the hospital by then, out of the mental mental health place, and he was out. So we set up all this the equipment and everything, and then he he says, well, he he was going to go ahead and leave, and um, what they were trying to do was let us have the house to ourselves, and you know was going to leave for a while. Well, a couple of the family members did stay there, mm-hmm. and um, so he was going to go fishing. Well. He ended up coming back later that night. It was really late. It was probably like 12 or 1 in the morning. And he came back and was asking about what all had happened. And we had told him that there was only a couple things that had happened, but it wasn't nothing physical. You know, we heard, uh, we would ask questions using dowsing rods. And the, the all of a sudden the door would shut. And then we'd uh-huh. ask another question, then it would open. You know, so we, uh-huh. we had things like that happening. And we told him about it. Well, then he suggested that, maybe if he went in with us and you know while we were talking to the spirit that maybe something would happen that maybe you know because it seemed to always uh target him sorry my cat my cat just uh jumped up and (laughs) jumped up my lap when i got right there (laughs) oh Oh, goodness Uh, but um so he went in with us it was it was uh me and my daughter and we were sitting on the bed when we set up everything. We were sitting on the bed, and I had the camcorder. And then um, my friend, uh, his name was Joe, he was on the other side, and the uh, the other gentleman was standing next to him. And so what we would do is Joe was asking questions and using the dowsing rods while me and my daughter were sitting there filming it and, and watching. And then um, the other guy was just standing there listening, pretty much. Well, he started asking the questions, and he was saying, um, are you afraid of Dawn? And the the dowsing rods would open, which meant no. And mm-hmm. then he said, uh, "So, but I bet you're afraid of me. And it would say no. And then he would say, well, why don't you come out? And he, he, he was provoking. He was trying really hard uh-huh. to provoke uh-huh. it. And he was like, well, why don't you come out so I can blah, 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 you know? And then the guy... Don said, you're scared, you're scared, because he was frustrated because it wasn't showing itself or doing anything where we could see, you know, that it was true. You know how it is. Yeah. I mean, they, people label them as crazy, you know, and it, you know how it is when you see stuff and people say, oh, you know, this person's just crazy. Well, it's frustrating, you know, um, yeah. and this guy, I can understand he was at his wits end with it, you know, so, uh-huh. so he started provoking it and then, um, one more time, my, my friend said, so you are afraid of Dawn. And about that time, the thing started to open up saying no. And all of a sudden, I mean, literally out of nowhere, all we heard was bam. <laughs> and it was it was such a loud crashing noise. We thought something hit the house. We really uh. did. It was so loud. And we, you know how it is when you're looking through infrared cameras, all you can see is what you're looking at directly. You can't uh-huh. see what all else is around because it doesn't really light up the room. Yeah. So we turn on the light and, and this guy, Don, was laying on the ground and he was belly down and up against the wall and uh, the opposite way, like up against it, facing the wall. And oh. he was catty cornered with a file cabinet. Well, the file cabinet even had a dent in it where it hit him, where he hit his head. Oh, I know. And he was laying there and I mean, he wasn't saying anything at all. He was just laying there and we thought, oh God, he's knocked out. You know, that's what we thought. And we were like, are you okay? Are you okay? And we we're trying to get him up. And then we were yelling and trying to get it, the other people that was in there out there on the porch watching on the monitors we were yelling for them to come in you know because he was hurt 
And um, so about that time, uh, he finally just starts crying. The guy uh, starts yeah. coming to and he starts crying. And um, so the finally the other people come in. Well, come to find out the reason it took them a few minutes to come in was because at the same time Dawn was thrown, the grandmother that was sitting on the front porch with the other people fell out of her chair. And they said that it was just like something just knocked her out of her chair. So it was at the same time, you know, so it was like, uh -huh. wow. <laughs> um, funny enough, too, the, the girl, that the 17-year-old that would go into a trance, mm -hmm. well, you and I know what that is. That's that yeah. demon taking possession over someone, mm -hmm. you know. Well, they said that when that had happened, right before the grandmother was thrown off the porch, the girl turned around and looked at the other investigator and smiled, and he said she looked so wicked that oh. she literally had the weirdest look on her face and her eyes looked dark and she turned around and she said nice to see you again and oh. i'm not gonna say the name but and and that and then that time the grandmother you know was thrown off her chair so it was just weird you know well then mm -hmm. after that happened we you know like i said he come to and we were all in there like gosh you know i mean we, we were in shock you know we didn't know what in the world you know we knew we knew what happened but we just mm -hmm. were like, what, what is causing this? I mean, what is going on, you know? And, and, uh, it was just weird. And when we got to the investigation though, that night, me and my daughter and another female that, that was on the investigation with us, we were walking around praying and we were like, you know, we were, what we were doing was a St. Michael's prayer <laughs> which you're not mm -hmm. supposed to pray to angels but that's what we were doing and we were we had holy water and we were you know going around the house and we were doing all these prayers and stuff and mm -hmm. um you know and, and this and the and this thing happened the way it did you know well i was yeah. also using the name of jesus because you know i grew up in church so i thought well if it's something bad just you know in the name of jesus go you know and i was praying that too you know so yeah. but but you see how this thing still, you know, manifests and did this, you know. Uh -huh. So when I had that on my, on the video camcorder, um, I had that on there. So I would like, you when we went to a meetup and we had met other investigators and I showed that to them, they wanted me to come to the conference and show it and talk about it. Well, so I, what I did was I, I um, talked about uh, ghost hunting safety. <laughs> and communication techniques so i was trying to teach people how to use dows and rods and how to you know communicate with these spirits i even had a widget board and showing them how to do that and mm -hmm. stuff like that now we know there's no safety in ghost hunting i mean it's we're opening ourselves up to the demonic you know when we yeah. are engaging them and trying to uh talk to them and stuff just like the bible tells us you know mm -hmm. but I didn't know that though, you know, even though I went to church, I didn't study the Bible. I didn't, I, I wasn't so, I wasn't dedicated. You know what I mean? I, I went uh -huh. because my dad called every Sunday and wanted me to go, you know, uh -huh. I, I wasn't, I wasn't uh, a Jesus follower. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I thought I believed in him. I, I believed that he was real. I believed all this, but I didn't follow him. And, yeah. um, I think there's a big difference there, you know. Yeah, you weren't fully committed to him in your heart. You you probably yeah. hadn't asked him to be your savior yet. Right, right. Either or I don't Lord, know. Or my Lord. Yeah. I didn't care about what he thought, you know, about stuff like that. Uh -huh. you know? sure. Well, to be sure. honest, at this time, I really didn't know. Um, I, I think maybe deep down, maybe I felt like, oh, I don't know if this is right, you know, because it's just mm -hmm. with the ghost, with the darkness. But, and I also thought it was weird, uh, it's funny now thinking about it, that when I would mm -hmm. go into the bookstore and I would look up books about, uh, you know, ghosts and stuff like that, it was always like right next to tarot cards and all this other stuff, you know, yeah, that, that yeah. was also a red flag because I thought, well, yeah. you know, if it's ghosts, why do they put it over here by this stuff, you know, I mean, that that mm -hmm. kind of stuff is sort of obvious, you know, like the mm -hmm. tarot, when you go to church, you know, like tarot cards, Ouija boards, things like that are more obvious, or they were to me, you know, yeah. back then. I know what you mean, I know what you mean, because, um, yeah. you know, my mum and I, when we were involved in spiritualism and all that, you know, we would be taught certain techniques, spiritual warfare, that, that was supposed to protect mediums and protect psychics. Wow. And interestingly enough, 
some of those techniques did in a sense work but later I realised that it was another deception of the enemy making you think that you were doing these things that were working when actual fact the demons hadn't left you at all they were just um, kind of a going into hiding as it were um, and again like that you know when we loved going to those types of bookshops too uh, and again you know a lot of the, the things that today whether it be um, ghost hunting or, or tarot or divination or astrology or yoga all of that stuff would be in the same store alongside books on you know witchcraft and the occult and I remember we would even get dictionaries about the occult every possible thing you can imagine would be in the dictionaries and in there would be things like ghost hunting and tarot and astrology and you would think you would think we would question that and say hey wait a minute if occultists are even listing these practices in occult dictionaries does that not mean something yeah but we just accepted it yeah that is something though i because i i it was something that really did kind of stick out at me but at the time i just thought mm-hmm. huh. i mean it more than once even you know because i was like oh that's weird it's always right here next to this other stuff you know but yeah and the tarot cards i tried um one time i thought all oh, the because now that's another thing um one time my mom uh she had a good friend uh and this lady did the tarot cards and I remember it was when I was, I think, no, I was already married. I was already married at the time. But um, she would let her do her cards and not thinking, mm-hmm. you know, that, oh, wow, you know, what can happen? <laughs> but I was doing that, too. I was, like, going to people and letting them read my cards and stuff. And one time I even bought some cards, and they said, oh, you know, sleep with them. Because I couldn't ever figure it out, and I just couldn't. I didn't feel like they were communicating to me, you know. I just, mm-hmm. I studied about it some, and I, they said, well, if you put it under your pill, put them under your pillow and sleep with them, like, for so many days, you know, that they'll start connecting to you or something like Ooh. that. And I did that, you know. But I never... I wasn't nothing accurate with it or anything, so I just kind of let it lie there. You know, I didn't really mess with that. Um, mm-hmm. And I do remember um, trying, like, meditation. I do remember that. Like, one time I was trying uh-huh. it, and I was sitting there, and I remember trying to connect. You know how it says to try to connect with the spirit guides or whatever? Mm-hmm. And I remember thinking, ooh, I don't know. I just felt weird about it. And I think that might yeah. have been because I was... I did go to church, you know, a lot, and then I was baptized when I was younger, too. You know, mm-hmm. so that might have been the Holy Spirit trying to protect me, you know, at the time. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I believe that even if you're saved, though, and you do these things, you're still uh, somewhat under, you know, going from under His umbrella protection. You Absolutely. Because the Bible, a lot of people think, well, you know, um, I'm always going to be saved it's by God's grace and I'm not going to be perfect none of us are so this stuff just does not apply to us we don't need to worry about it but that's so untrue mm. <gasps> I mean these oh. things do have implications and the Bible talks about it and it, it does, none of that changed whether mm-hmm. whether the person's really saved or not even if we take that issue off of the table it's mm-hmm. still going to reap the repercussions of because I did and a lot of people that are in it also suffered you know when Mm -hmm. starting to get traumatized and starting to get you know these spirits uh you know uh tormenting us and stuff like that this stuff still happens whether you're saved or not you know um absolutely and it's like flirting with flirting with the devil or or flirting with demons Uh, and i guess all through the bible uh, believers did sometimes get into the occult or witchcraft and all of that divination and trying to contact the dead they did um uh, some people think well because i'm a christian that won't work or yes. i'll just be protected or whatever but god gives so many warnings about these practices in the bible because it is demonic and he just doesn't want people being uh, affected by the demonic it's uh, yeah wh- why even open ourselves to that it's, it's just horrible yeah absolutely yeah, I know a lot of people debate, you know, why God has his rules uh, for us on this subject. 
And, mm-hmm. you know, some people think, well, it's just because God wants us to consult with him, you know, things like that. But it really is to protect us. It really is. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we see in the Bible about, you know, uh, Samuel and Saul and the familiar spirit and all this. I mean, we know that they can come and impersonate. And mm-hmm. um, and you think and, and think about this. A lot of people think, OK, that that really wasn't a familiar spirit. It was really um uh Samuel okay think about this everything is in the bible okay anything that we need to be uh concerned about you know what i mean pretty much anything we can look at yeah. the bible to it okay mm-hmm. if that's not talking about that then where is it in the bible talking about these dead the the spirits that come back and impersonate the dead that really end up being demons then where is it because mm-hmm. the bible would tell us it is sufficient you know, yeah. and so that's another reason I'm like, no, it must be talking about that because the the medium had a familiar spirit, you know, mm-hmm. and then the other verses that talk about that, uh, you know, that was why Saul died was because, you know, uh, he, he rebelled against God and he consulted the familiar spirit. You know, it's, it's very clear. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. But, you know, but it's we can, we can maybe, you can maybe uh, share a little more about that next time dana because we're actually approaching the end of the show uh but i think people will appreciate your insights on that very topic samuel and saul and the the witch of endor um so just in closing what i would love you to do um at the end of the show is pray for the listeners yes. uh, some might be believers and some might not be and but before we do that in the next minute or two mm-hmm. could you just Please remind folks of your YouTube channel and your blog and how they can find you on Facebook. Okay, um, my on Facebook it is uh, under Exposing the Enemy, starting with the E. And then on YouTube it's also Exposing the Enemy. And then if you go to my the website where the blogs are, it is www.x posing the enemy.com starting with the x um and and pretty much that's how you can find it or if you go to the our spiritual quest you can also read some of my blogs too <laughs> oh that's true my blog that's true i've been yeah. stealing all, all your posts and all your videos awesome. <laughs> putting them on my blog that's true yeah um, that's awesome yes yeah, so j- just just pray um as you feel led to now dana for our dear listeners Yes. Father God, I thank you for this opportunity to share my testimony of how you saved me and how you truly changed my stony heart for a heart after you. As I begin to pray here, I can't help but think of the millions out there that are broken and in darkness, which I know breaks your heart, Lord, as it does ours. Father, I pray that people that are out there in the occult that hear this will receive our message and know that we too were not above being deceived and we know you love us and that you would have none to perish but have eternal life with you. I pray this may bring people to your precious gift of salvation. We will exalt your name, Lord, above all names and will never be ashamed of your word or your truth. We give you the highest honor, Lord. Without you, we are nothing. From dust we come and to dust we will go. Father, I ask that you will help us to be bold, never compromising your loving truth. And I ask you to help us to accomplish what you have called Laura and I to do in this ministry. As I know, without you, it would not be possible. We love you and we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dana, um, so much. It was a beautiful prayer. And um, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing the first part of your testimony and of course I had a feeling this might happen because I've heard your testimony before I had a feeling we wouldn't um, hear it all in the first show so so guys please do tune in again the next two or three shows perhaps as we hear Dana um, tell us more about what happened and how she came to full uh, freedom through Jesus Christ. Thank you again, Dana, so much, and look forward to speaking to you again next time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for having me, too. I really look forward to it, and I look forward to any other future shows. Thank you. So do I. 
Thank you so much. God bless and bye-bye for just now. Bye-bye. The views expressed in this production may not necessarily be those of Eternal Radio. Eternal Radio.